five. We're gonna post a little message to Slack chat. And we are going to get going on a game here. I said I would stream Dan's game. So let's get right into it. Looks like Dan's playing CCT versus Ryan, who is on Legend. I know Ryan's been playing quite a bit of Legend. Um, I played against his Legend deck at the Andor Grand Prix, actually, uh, back in, what was that, January? Feels like years ago. Um, I do think he's changed up a little bit since then. That was. Uh, Blaster Pings deck, so we'll see what his starting effects reveal here, but I do believe that he's probably changed things up to a more traditional build now. I know that deck has evolved a little bit since then, at least. Uh, Dan, I know, has been uh, playing CCT quite a bit recently in the OCS. He actually reached out to me, and we talked a little bit about decks. Um, but if you were watching streams earlier, you might remember that he was uh, unhappy with me for not sharing all of my tech because we hadn't teamed up for this event. So we'll see what he's got here, though. <clears throat> Looks like Brent, uh, Ryan is going with the uh, battle plan combo start. I've seen quite a few people playing that one recently. A Brave Resistance and Walk Lane. Dan with... Any methods necessary, obviously. Doing the usual, getting out his dungeon, Boba Fett blaster rifle, and slave one. Dan pulls He's All Yours Bounty Hunter with the first activation that he gets, which is actually from. Wrong window. Ignore me, Mike. Okay, I'll ignore you, Taco Bill. Um. Anyways, as I was saying, it looks like Dan was able to activate with any methods necessary. He must have opening handed that to grab his um. He's all yours, bounty hunter, and then he activates the rest. Goes in with Boba Fett. <laughs> Typical start here. Telling me he loves this deck so fun. Indeed it is, Dan. I have thoroughly enjoyed playing it. I uh, talked a little bit with Stubbly about it yesterday, actually. I went, if I'm not mistaken, something like 18 and 4 in the OCS with the CCT scum over the last few months. So it's definitely been a favorite deck of mine. I was 6 and 0 in June with it. And then, like, I think three and three with light side, so been very pleased with uh, its performance for sure. <clears throat> Dan goes ahead and moves on over to the audience chamber, draws up a couple cards here. He's gonna save that last one. He's gonna pull a shield. And he does indeed save his last one. I find myself turn one tending to draw up um, just because you get that extra activation from the Carbonite Chamber Console. However, if you're afraid of them coming to attack you, it's reasonable to definitely leave one force active just in case uh, you need to pay for an interrupt for that battle plan combo. Um, I've found that Legend traditionally just goes to Luke's hut turn one. Which slows them down enough that they can't really attack you at the audience chamber quite as early. Uh, however, I have, I have had Legend attack me at the audience chamber turn one before, so it's not unheard of. Ryan goes ahead and searches. It looks like he got quite a bit of activation in his opening hand. Uh, he does go the antechamber, the Luke's hut 
from hand, and then uh, I believe Jakku as well, right? Or was Jakku? No, Jakku started, sorry. So he pulls the saddle with the objective, and then I would imagine if Luke was in there, he will probably pull Luke as well. Oh, looks like he's going for it. Ahsoka turn one. Imperial barrier against Ahsoka. Ryan doesn't appear to have a response for that. He does pull a shield, though, in simple tricks. Again, I think Dan may have wanted the... Uh, Sense shield. We talked a little bit about that watching Gornall's game with CCT. Um, I think against that high ability character, you want you want your sense shield out. Maybe even before they deploy them, if you have barrier in your hand. However, he did go for the oppressive enforcement, so he's at least getting the. If it gets canceled, it goes back to the use pile instead of lost. Looks like Dan went for scum and missed. That's a tough miss. However, it looks like he did have it in his hand. I wonder if he opening handed one and or or maybe drew into one and then hoped to deploy his second from reserve, um, but activated it on accident. Well, as accidental as that can be, I guess, right? <laughs> All right, here comes the beat squad. Cad Bane, Orlom with gun, Antilles maneuver. To prevent the shots from being free, I don't think Dan's going to mind that too much. Well, these EPPs aren't going to do very much against Ahsoka. Um, first strike seems decent. He's got some beats going on. So this is uh this is gonna be hard on Ryan. Jedi mind trick. So it looks like Dan is gonna have to pay to battle and not fire weapons. Which the only weapon that he'd be getting is that uh Maybe he'll maybe he'll pull a card that activates and he'll be able to fire his Boba Fett's blaster rifle. I don't know that it's necessarily worth it though. I mean, Cad Bane just canceling the immunity. You you outpower Ahsoka by enough that you're going to cause a little bit of overflow here. Um, if there's no Hujix, <clears throat> I think that's the right play by Dan. Um, Job of the Hut is a one for Destiny. That is one of the unfortunate things about battling early with this CCT deck, is you will draw a lot of characters. Uh, there's 20-some of them there. We get a Wars Not Make One Great. This is a very interesting card for Legend. This is kind of the, the tech that we're seeing Ryan go for. So he will use Walkling at some point, probably, to pull uh, Wars Not Make One Great. What it does is it makes either player pay plus one force to initiate battle. Uh, and then Ryan is also going to run a whole bunch of things that mess with Dan's force pile. Uh, you know, things that make him act or pay force for uh, actions that Ryan is taking, things like that. It's actually very similar to some of the mechanics in the CCT deck. But then Ryan doesn't have to worry about having, say, to pay extra to initiate battles and force drains because he has the free battles with the battle plan combo. So, interesting little spin on the deck, especially when, you, when you're getting that redraw, you, you mess with all of their piles, you manipulate your opponent's piles so they really have a tough time navigating exactly how many force to activate, things like that. Uh, Walkling, what you missed was Ahsoka came down against Lone Boba Fett turn one instead of Luke. I'm assuming Luke must not have been in reserve deck turn one for uh, Ryan. 
And so he went Ahsoka against Boba Fett, and Boba Fett barriered her. Uh, she didn't have a sense or anything like that, so the barrier stuck, and then Dan deployed the beat squad. Looks like Ryan is going to take his forces elsewhere and deploy all of his characters in Solo, Ray, and BB-8 over to the antechamber. Uh, Dan's going to get a little bit of time to establish. Looks like he's going to pay to drain. Kind of push a little bit of damage through here. However, Ryan is now matching him. Um, Ryan is definitely down here. However, I don't think that the game is out of reach for him by any by any stretch. Um, we haven't seen a Leia yet. I'm sure he's got a blaster rifle for her. Um, he's definitely got a few tricks up his sleeve. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, if Dan has time to stabilize here and is able to get IG-88 online, that's going to be costly in that um, he's going to be able to start getting those force pile pulls and be able to get the cards that he needs for the necessary matchup here. Looks like he's going to try to establish a little bit of space presence. Ellis and Hinthra to Jakku, as well as Woof. Um, pretty strong force here. Um, Ryan is, appears to not be feeling very good about the matchup right now. You know, if he is able to find a, a Tantive Holdo, something like that, and, and get a hold of space a little bit, that might be an option for him. Um, I do think he is, like I said, down a little bit, but I don't, I don't think the game is out of reach for him by any means. <clears throat> Let's see what he decides to do here. He's got that force pile pull, so he might be able to fish out an important key card. And He's going to draw a bottom card, BB-8 pings. It doesn't appear, no, Walkling, that either player likes to have many cards in hand. <laughs> we're getting back up there now, but we're down two, two and four, respectively, for a minute. Dan just finished his third monster. I think I'm working on my third one somewhere around here as well. All right, we got Luke coming down to the saddle. So, all right, it's going to set up now. <clears throat> I, I just imagine that he must not have had a Luke in his reserve deck turn one. That was why he made that play. Gold leader and gold one to space. Lando scoundrel to space. Looks like we're uh, playing fast and loose. Ryan's going to initiate the battle. Dan calls for an action. I would imagine it must, might have been the shield. And he just missed the, uh, missed, missed the auto pass on it. But it's a little bit late, I think. All right, let's see what Ryan can get here. 
two battle destinies. Can you take out both Woof and the ship, even though both of those destinies are minus one each? Oh, I was wondering if that might have been the case. Let's see if we can refresh here. I've been having some connection issues today, so <clears throat> just for Jerry, I'll get into full screen mode. And we're back. I would imagine both of our players had to deal with refreshes as well here. So, oh, here's our destinies. A four, which is a three. And Dan draws a one. All right. Looks like Woof's gonna get the boot, the beat, the beats here. Yeah, Ryan's not feeling good here. It looks like Dan is definitely in the driver's seat on this one. <clears throat> Dan goes for a voyeur. I would imagine he will claim perimeter scan since we saw it drawn for destiny, which he does. And Ryan has one force loss. I like Voyeur in this deck because uh, Dan decides to play it used, which I think is just fine. I mean, he's going for diff. Um, but you do have the option to play it as a lost interrupt to target that interrupt directly. And then it almost acts as a second grabber, right? Um, it's kind of nice in CCT just because then during your control phase you can retrieve layer and do it again to another interrupt. So kind of have an option for uh, eliminating a few problematic interrupts during the game with layer in that regard. <clears throat> so drain's gonna, uh, drain's gonna get Odin Nestler and their Rebel Leadership. Dan will retrieve the He's All Yours Bounty Hunter. Now Hutta is a card that I would usually like to like to have access to in this matchup, but it sits on top of Lost Pile here. I wonder if Dan will try and get the the My Decoration Retrieval this turn by moving over to the dungeon. Instead he goes for Scum Retrieval. Fights doesn't even need to move over. What am I thinking? Yeah, Eric, I really like uh, Voyeur's a uh, card that Worf's convinced me to add to uh, CCT. We were working on this one. Who is doing the uh, Star Wars CCG PC account right now? Usually I'm I used to that being Dan, but I know it can't be him because I'm watching him play right now. But anytime, I, I'm happy to help jump in and stream. I, I kind of want to do a little bit more of this. It's kind of fun, so. No, I am doing both. Just kidding. It's Chris. Oh, hi, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you make that joke, but we did have an incident with that yesterday, so <clears throat> I won't get into that. We'll focus on this game. All right, so Ray's going to draw a bottom card here, see if uh, Ryan can find anything. 
Looks like he's kind of just biding his time. Dan was able to get his IG-88 online, so he's going to have free force pile searches, which, I, I mean, that means we're probably going to see U3PO come down before long, stopping that drain that Ryan is getting off. Um, and then on top of that, Dan has his retrieval, so BB-8 really is kind of nullified in that regard as well. Um, it's looking like kind of, and that's that's the thing. I, I just talked about this a little bit earlier on stream when we were watching another CCT deck. Um, it, it's kind of a slow, painful death once they get control. You know, they don't do a whole lot of damage. It's just kind of that um, death by a million paper cuts, if you will. Um, looks like Ryan's going to go wide here. He's putting Chewy, Rose, and Theronet down. Um, Honestly, at this point in the game, that might be something that Maul can feast on ability-wise. Oh, Dan could just drop Maul down there, blank all those guys' ability, and not really have to deal with it. Um, you know, you have to watch out for Anakin, something like that, I guess, but that certainly might be an option for Dan. Getting that broken concentration back. Broken Concentration is a fun card in CCT. You get that locked down. You get him going. Get get it going on with uh, Arctic Online, and you're kind of doing a you pay one, they pay two type deal. And similarly to what it looks like Ryan's Legend deck does, you really manipulate their piles so they have a tough time again, kind of navigating that activation ratio properly. On top of that, Broken Concentration actually has a really inter interesting inter interaction with the flip side of the Legend Objective when they can peek at the top two cards of their Force Pile and Reserve deck and place them. Broken Concentration can then actually place the Force Pile card back on Reserve deck so that it changes what that destiny that they may have set up was or takes away a Force that was activated. Likewise, Sometimes the Broken Concentration gets used first, and then Legend is able to navigate their way around um, what Broken Concentration has done by either activating extra or setting up the destiny that the Dark Side player has just placed on their reserve deck. Kind of found that to be a fun little mini game between the two decks when I was testing these objectives quite a bit. Oh, we see a Grogra go lost. So Dan did take my Grogra tech. <laughs> Again, just forcing that opponent to pay a little bit more to do a little bit less. You know, I come to find that if you get your Grogra, your Arctic, your uh, Broken Concentration, your Projective Telepathy, your Stunning Leader, all of those things accessible with IG-88, um, your opponent can do, they can play about one guy per turn and not do much else. And then it becomes really hard to battle when you're, all of your guys draw Destiny on their own. They're all like power seven to eight because Scum adds three with uh, Despair. And um, it, it really becomes hard to deal with once you get that whole entire control aspect set up. But it doesn't look like Dan's going to go for that route this game. Um, especially with that big beatdown that he got early on. He does play as you'll be dead. So we're going to see a little bit of ping damage coming out of that blaster. Uh, that was something that we played around with a little bit as well. Playing the you'll be dead as well as Imperial Artillery. Obviously Imperial Artillery is a lost interrupt with you'll be dead, but you play Imperial Artillery during the control phase and then retrieve during the control phase and you get that seven back and potentially set up for attract destiny um, especially potent in a deck that does not tend to draw many high destiny um, fun little tech there as well allegations of corruption will grab rescue in the clouds <clears throat> dan just kind of minimizing that um, life force count that Ryan's able to keep up with. I 
IG88 is going to search for a card through the force pile. I would imagine we will probably see an undercover spy come down this turn. I'm not sure if I would play the undercover spy to the drain two site though, unless Dan has imbalance in his hand. Uh, I would imagine at this point he might. That's entirely possible with 10 cards in his hand. Um, but Chewie could just... Sorry about the mess that droid. Taking more force loss. And Drain of Three being especially hurtful. Ellis adding that light side icon up at the Jakku system. Against Dryan. All right. Dan plays the no escape. I would. You know, Ryan might just activate and draw up, so it's possible that Broken Concentration may have been the right pull just to keep Ryan from being able to draw up, and then Dan could retrieve those final few cards in his Lost Pile. Um, especially hurtful, but another one of those things that CCT can do well. He's going to get most of them back here anyways. So in this case, Dan did opt to leave that blaster rifle with Boba Fett so he can get the pings and the drain at the non-battleground. I think that Ryan's planning probably just to draw up here, though, so it doesn't matter too much. Plays a used interrupt. Get an extra shield. Get an extra life force back. And plays another shield. Ryan does pay to drain, so he's not going to draw up here. <laughs> Gets that female interrupt online, so he's able to uh, cause a little bit of extra damage. Then we get the drain two of the carbonite chamber. Dan loses strictly from hand and will probably not be. Uh, there's another voyeur grabbed wisely by Ryan this time. What's he going to choose this time? I think I can handle myself. Wisely chosen, Dan. <laughs> And loses his kick. That is the dark time. Really making an effort to maximum life, maximize life force count for himself here. He's up to 31. He's going to take a card with IG, taking him back down to 30. He's going to drain three in space, one at each of the Tatooine sites and ping for one. For a total of six damage, he's not going to quite finish Ryan off yet. I think Ryan's going to hang in there for one more turn. Alright, there's that 6 damage, 
Ryan saves one in hand. The final three come from reserve. Broken concentration. Solo is going to alter that. Well played by Ryan there, avoiding the lock. So Dan is not able to retrieve his entire force pile. However, with imp impressive enforcement online, it's possible Dan could get his broken concentration back out. Yet still. He would have to kill BB. Yeah, good point. Good point. So we'll probably see the end of the game before that happens, huh? <laughs> BB 8's going to ping. Speak to the devil. And there is the draw of the concession. A uh, very well played match by Dan. Uh, took advantage of a window that Ryan was unfortunately given to him. Um, Dan had that barrier and Ryan didn't have a canceller for it. And that was kind of what the game came down to, I think. We're going to have an Ellis here just to get another card in the use pile. And Dan will get the win. My, my 33 is that. Wow. Very well played for sure. Good games on both players' parts. As we speculated, I would imagine Ryan missed the... Uh, the Luke pull at the beginning of the game felt like he had to do something, so Ahsoka came down. Unfortunately, the barrier was a, an early draw for Dan. Fortunately for Dan, there was a barrier that was drawn early. And uh, he was able to really capitalize on that. Yeah, I think plus 33 might be enough to, to earn him a spot. I think that... Uh, We'll have to make sure and check for results. I, I haven't really been able to do that as I've been streaming, but um, I think it is entirely possible that he, uh, he might snag one of those spots. So, all right. Well, I think that's about all the uh, Star Wars that we got for today. So I think I'm going to call it a night, but thank you guys for joining me. And, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to get back together soon and stream some more Star Wars. So until then, may the force be with you guys.